Welcome back to part two of episode three of Smack Talk. We're going to talk a little bit about relationships right now. Woo! Start getting into the shit that WWE loves with their fucking soap opera bullshit. Um, I don't know. What should we go with first? Melina or should we start going right into Triple H? Let's go. I with... think we should talk about it. Okay. Okay. Melina has, Melina has been talking about how she hasn't found Mr. Right. Aww. Oh. So apparently John Morrison is not Mr. Right for her. Apparently Batista wasn't either when he was banging her backstage when she was dating Morrison. I, I don't get the thing with Melina. I, if I, I forgot were, about Mike Knox, by the way. That was a yikes. If I were in Morrison's shoes, <laughs> I would be looking at all of the good-looking divas in the WWE and just... <sighs> I don't know. To me, Melina just seems like she is the root of all of these problems that are around Morrison's life. And don't get me wrong, I like Melina. I thought she was a great diva when she was in WWE, and I didn't think that she necessarily should have been fired. I don't know, the backstage stuff as well. So maybe that would be the primary reason. But in terms of raw talent, I think that she was great, and I liked her a lot. Yeah, even the hesitation of like if he's going to stay or go when his contract comes up. It's, I, I keep associating it with the fact that Molina's not with the company anymore. It might be. I mean, he might be trying to get some kind of like a double deal with TNA where he goes and Molina goes, and then they can move to Florida together, and she can bitch and complain about whatever bullshit he did. And I, I don't know. I don't, I think, I don't, you know, you should be rid of her, really, because... What what is she doing? And 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 the fact is, you know, it's not about Mister Right. She's had one too many Misters to have a right. You know, good, good. That, like you guys said, she's just causing problems for him left and right. Like the whole WrestleMania thing, where uh, he kind of snubbed Trish Stratus, or at least all the reports were saying he snubbed Trish Stratus because Melina was in a pissy mood. That that thing was completely ridiculous. If I would have had a show back then, I think I might have even talked about it on the website. I don't understand at all how she can think that that was her spot. She wasn't doing anything at that time. She was doing Morrison. Well, maybe not. I mean, maybe she was doing uh, one of the random backstage people trying to look for Mr. Right. She's Tech clearly guy. doing the wrong person since she didn't make the WrestleMania card. <laughs> she should have done it. Or Michael Hayes, apparently, that gets the job done. <laughs> when we're talking about Morrison and we're talking about Molina and their whole relationship thing, the first thing that comes to my mind is if this whole thing with Melina is the problem and Morrison, when he is separated from Melina, ends up getting these pushes in WWE, you would think after a little while of doing this, because it's happened multiple times where he's gotten some bit, uh, some push and then it's gone right back down and it almost always seems to deal with either Vince thinking that he's not tough enough or something happens with Melina or a crossover where Vince thinks he's not tough enough because he's not standing up for Melina or, you know, yelling at Melina or anything like that. You would think that Morrison would reach a point where he just realizes, you know what, this is a bane in my life and I need to just kind of call it quits. I think it's more like genital herpes, you know, she's there one minute, gone the next, but oh, back again. And you're giving it to everyone else. <laughs> But, you know, the the whole thing, I, I, I think it wasn't just Vince, but he was getting a lot of heat from um, backstage in the locker room because that she was just doing all these nasty things. She had an attitude problem and he wasn't sticking up for himself, you know. And, yeah, she did hurt him because she left a very bad stigma wherever she went. You know, she literally destroyed his career by association the best thing he can do is just take the lumps that he's going to get because it will get better eventually. You know, so many guys ended up getting hurt in the WWE or having their careers stalled because of women, you know, Jerry Lawler to name one of them, gold dust, um, Randy Savage, all these guys had a woman behind them. Oh, Mark Merrow as well, you know, and, and these women sort of hindered their careers, you know, because of um, the way they acted backstage, they didn't associate themselves, they thought they were better than everybody else, and the heat just sort of transferred onto the other guys, and you can't do that, you know, it it ends up being a huge career killer, and sometimes even um, stops you from making any money, if you look into guys like uh, Ricky Steamboat, he didn't even own his name because his wife had a piece of it, 
Yeah, it's kind of like regular businesses. They don't really, they frown upon relationships in the workplace because of scenarios like that. Uh, they, they run, they're, they're running a business. They should run it like that and they should keep that separate. Yes, you can, you're going to end up finding someone possibly through the business, but at the same time, you got to learn how to separate business from uh, your love life. And I think WWE needs to do that too. On their yeah. on their end of the argument, I don't think that Morrison dating Molina, if he, of course, now if he does something wrong because of that, then he deserves to get punished. But if Molina's done something wrong and she's bitched and complained for some reason or other, and Morrison doesn't do anything, I don't think that they should take it out on him just for being together. The same reason as if somebody is pissed off at Triple H, they shouldn't just get uh, immediately pissed off at Stephanie because they're a package deal. Yeah, but if you look at it, nine times out of ten, Morrison did do something stupid because of Molina. Oh, yeah, he completely did. So that's, you know, that's one of the <laughs> yeah, That's totally irrelevant. Triple H has a brain. You know, Morrison, it looks like his brain sort of went in his penis. Yeah. Because, uh, <laughs> you know, the most of the time is if you don't do what I say, you don't get sex. So. Yeah, and then they did that whole, the perfect incident is the WrestleMania thing. There was no, yes. It's, it sucks Melina didn't make the card, but you're on the damn card. Your primary goal was for you to make it. Why are you going to go ahead and insult a legend like that? Because as soon as you go toe-to-toe with a legend, you're already in the wrong. Right. I mean, Morrison should have reserved the judgment to just be like, look, Melina, that didn't happen. Uh, you haven't been being booked in that kind of a position for weeks so it doesn't make any sense be happy for me because of course if she was in the position she would want him to be happy for her uh and all around just be professional kids you know right exactly That's what you gotta do if you have your missus and she's complaining about something be professional don't take it in the workplace and also don't insult trish stratus because oh, yeah. she has more clout than you yeah, don't don't go and uh, pinpoint a legend. If you're gonna pinpoint someone for taking your spot, pinpoint the bimbo from Jersey Shore. Like, don't go after the someone who's already made like ten years of her career in the business. Exactly. Now, uh, no homo for Jomo, but I honestly think that he could do better. Oh, uh, easily. What was that? Yeah, especially with those killer easily. abs. Oh, yeah, easily. they were making a uh, crack at me. <laughs> I, I, no, I. I want a great cheese on that man's head. <laughs> and the it's hair, great. you know, he kind of looks like a girl, so you can get away with it a bit. See, Jomo, you can do better. You got two people right here and <laughs> can base that all go for you. Oh, yeah, I'm gay for Jomo. I'm homo I'm a for Jomo. Jomo. Homo. You want some of the Jomo mojo? No show. <laughs> um, well, power couples in WWE... Uh, obviously brings up Triple H and Stephanie and somebody else that's been being talked about quite a bit recently, which is a bit of a surprise is China partially because, and I, I want to kill myself for even saying this. Oh yeah. She is going to get the mainstream to pour and crossover award at the uh, flesh bot awards (laughs) for backdoor to China. I naturally, cannot comment on the video i wouldn't watch that if i can't me. <laughs> what do you think good sequel to uh one night in china <laughs> oh my god it was like a horror movie it's a very thin line between a china porn and a homosexual porn it's like it was like, it's like uh, i might as well have been watching triple h do it <laughs> we'll see that's how bad it I haven't even wanted to see the movie See No Evil, so there's no way I'm going to watch the China. Oh, this is far better than See No Evil. <laughs> if WWE put their name on it, I think it would have sold. Is the acting <laughs> at least better than the normal John Cena movie? Oh, the acting was brilliant. You know, she just said a few words and then just had some big guys pile up. <laughs> the dudes had to pretend to be attracted to her. <laughs> what well, dudes? I thought she was the dude in it. Uh, it's a low joke, but come on. <laughs> Take it, you manly person. <laughs> well, she, she has been talking about wanting to come back to WWE and that, oh, the, God, no. that the only reason that they're not doing it is because WWE doesn't want her back. I can understand why, because she really, I mean, she's not going to be some full-time performer or anything like that. So, Plus, she was mental when she was there. Mm-hmm. So, 
if the she president doesn't fit, go ahead uh, she doesn't fit in the pg scheme either you can't have somebody who does porn all of a sudden show up and be like hey i'm china exactly that i'm thinking to myself well you just did a porn movie and you're trying to promote this porn movie wwe is getting to the point where they don't even like to show i mean they made a big deal out of the maxim cover and that was the thing that they used to do with the playboy issues yeah. So if Playboy isn't even good enough, the last thing that they're going to do is promote backdoor to China. You know what I mean? It's Jerry Lawler would have a field day with this. <laughs> Paul going, WWE Survivor Series sponsored by Backdoor to China. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to hear Booker T's take on it. <laughs> uh, in this business, in the porn business. <laughs> Just flat black, Jay and Dak, got to get that lie back. I'm, I'm sure his dull commentary would be the exact same thing as the normal commentary. The shucky ducky quack quack, and he would released just a special on. edition version of Bat Dot to China with like WWE commentary on it. Oh Booker yeah, T just Ross. calling the whole thing. <laughs> he's he's going to do it there. This person here is in my fave five. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. I'm gonna tell you. Let me tell you. I'm tell you. This is fruity, fruity. <laughs> Oh, God, we could go on for so long. <laughs> well, when it comes to uh, China coming back, I mean, if she came back for a quick angle, I would be up for it. If she came back thinking that she was going to do full-time work and be in this Legends contract like the most other people are and doing DVDs and interviews and popping up. She's doing DVDs. It's not the kind that we want. <laughs> then I, I don't know. I think like most legends these days now, ever since they started handing out those type of contracts, they are like more and more intrigued to coming back to the WWE. Uh, especially like since the guys like Kevin Nash and stuff, they come onto these legend contracts. It's like, Hey, I can work uh, some of the year and make some money. So it's like automatically a draw for people who were like, yeah, we had some fame for a few years. Maybe I can go back and get one more pop. I'm sure the China's already been popped. So, <laughs> one in the back door times. and the front door. <laughs> one yeah, of the other yeah, things. There was that... a huge problem as well with uh, drugs that she was having, and I don't think she's over that. So, um, I don't think we'll ever see her back in the WWE. No, I, if anything, it'll be one of those uh, issues where 20 years from now she comes back and Vince is dead and. <laughs> Triple H has gotten over everything. And or she'll be a byline on the WWE site, you know, on the deceased page. Yeah. Maybe, you know, China used to perform and all this kind of crap, and we she wish her the best in her future and endeavors. Boy, she performed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's oh. definitely going to be someone who goes to the Hall of Fame, like, post-life. Post-mortem. Uh, one of the other things, and this is a little bit of a cheap segue... Uh, Triple H was talking about what he does that sometimes he just does for his own pleasure. Of course, I'm just going to naturally refer to this as Triple H pleases himself. But uh, <laughs> Triple H was saying that sometimes he'd rather cut uh, promos that alienate the audience and just makes tri uh, Shawn Michaels laugh than it's all completely worth it. I think this is one of those things that is a real problem. Triple H has always sort of been out for himself, but if he's flat out admitting it now that he'd rather do something that's funny to himself or a couple of his buddies in the middle of the ring when he's supposed to be doing something uh, productive, I mean, he could be doing the same thing by putting people over instead of making fun of them. And it's always about what Triple H wants. Triple H cut a promo not that long ago where he said that there was nobody in the back that was better and all this kind of stuff. And it was like – it was extremely derogatory to the whole roster but promoting himself again. Now, if he got a, a laugh out of that and he thinks that that's fine, well, then that's I – mean, obviously, it's not the best thing for business right now. And if we could talk about Triple H coming, uh, letting China back and, and whether or not that's the best for business, but when it comes to – your basic everyday operations he's got to stop thinking of what's funny for himself and his friends and think about what's better for the company but that's the thing as well though the wwe is kind of a, a, a boy scout they've got a boy scout mentality going on because um they usually work a few lines or they'll do something stupid 
to like please the guys in the back rather than to actually get their guys over and and you you are actually right because it's it's kind of detrimental as well because he's not putting over the new talent and nobody in the back is actually thinking about putting the new talent over but again you know sometimes if you're going to do something comedic then then do it but make sure that everyone's in on the joke because if he's doing it with the intention just to make sure Michael's laugh well people are just going to be standing there looking at him like he's a fool you know and he won't be remembered as the talented wrestler that he is well semi-talented what do you think Dace? well you know when it comes to Triple H it's always the uh, he, he can go away for like a year and I swear he's the only wrestler where people don't go, hey, when's he coming back? It's just kind of like... Because I don't want him back. Yeah, it's kind of like he's going to come back. He, he's married to the business now. It's just more of a less just kind of stay away for a little while. I was most entertained by him when he wasn't involved in the title picture. Because it was like for the first time, he stepped aside and let other people battle out for it. Even though he was still main eventing as DX and stuff. But still, he stepped aside from the title picture. Well, when we get to part three, we're going to talk about something that is definitely, in my opinion, good for the business. And it may or may not happen, but a little bit of uh, foresight here. The Rock and John Cena in Piper's Pit. Stay tuned.